Hi, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending September the 10th, 2021. Well, I well, hope you like our new, uh, our new uh, reconfiguration of the studio so that I don't have my face right up in the camera like it's been for the past several weeks. I uh, hope that wasn't too much of a distraction for you. I hope you like this better. Anyway, let's get into the market movements this week. Had a bit of a down move and some uh, and, and and some movements in the, in the treasuries uh, a little bit. This was due to uh, global uh, central banks beginning their tapering process. We had Australia, um, among others, and the European Central Bank, among others, that began their tapering process. And so the Fed is watching these reactions, and then uh, not so yet in the United States, but you know it's coming, and that's why we saw some profit taking going on uh, in the major uh, indexes uh, uh, during the week, and then the week closing very bullish. They took them down to their near poor, near near term support levels, and uh, we're still very bullish on the markets uh, as things open back up. Gapped up very high today using those. Uh, uh, previously uh, averages that were resistance now using those as support so we expect next week to return to a normal bullish market absent some calamity happening over the weekend treasuries uh, tenure hanging around in the mid 130s on a daily basis finishing out the week right at 130 so that's about the same it was 129 last week 130 this week yeah we're, we're bullish on the market so let me move then into social security taxation this week last week we talked about the trustees 2021 report on the viability long term, intermediate and long term for the program. This week, let's talk about the Social Security taxation because if there is going to be a, a, a raise in taxes as the most viable solution to uh, protect viability of Social Security program, then likewise, uh, that's that is, you have to watch out for uh, Social Security for all tax rates to increase overall. And if you're paying taxes on your Social Security, then you're not maximizing it and you're also very much exposing your Social Security benefits, which is the foundation of most people's retirement, to, to, the, to the increasing, probably by 2030 at least, of all other tax rates that's really going to eat into a 30 year, 20, 30 year retirement plan. Uh, so you don't need your Social Security benefits tax. How do you avoid that? Well, you avoid that by doing the things that it takes to not have things count as provisional incomes. Now, we are going to delve into this discussion in depth at our upcoming classes, two-night class, Lanier Tech uh, at the Forsyth Co uh, Community Center on 3410 Ronald Reagan Boulevard in Cumming, Georgia. We're going to get into part of this, so I'll give you a little piece of this right now. We'll talk about the provisional income tonight, but let me just say that you can register for that by going to assetguidancegroup.com, going to the footer or any other, there's a variety of different places on the website that will take you to our events page, but the easiest uh, is that, easiest for me to remember, is go down to the footer and hit on educational events link and that'll take you right there. You can register online for that, okay, or you can use the the uh, site that's uh, here on the web screen on, on, the, on the screen right now. All right, well, let's then talk about a little bit about what ca causes provisional income, what counts as provisional income, and then causes your Social Security to be taxed. Well, all your earned income, distributions from qualified plans like 401ks, IRAs, etc., RMDs, required minimum distributions out of those plans, uh, are, is counted towards provisional income. Anything that you get a 1099 from out of your taxable assets, uh, that your taxable savings that you get a 1099 on, it's going to count as provisional income. Pension income is the biggest one that we see a lot, but rental income, that kind of passive activity that so many people I see in this area of, of the Atlanta metro area that uh, really was their salvation coming out of the financial crisis, turned them into millionaires. Yeah, and, 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 and maybe not multi-millionaires, but millionaires in a technical sense, that rental income is, is going to count as provisional income. It's also going to the, the actual property. Uh, a lot of people hold these in IRAs, okay? Uh, probably a, a different discussion is, is, the, uh, is, is the requirement to distribute that uh, at the end of your life and, and an inheritance uh, IRA if you pass that on. Uh, you're going to create a, a tax problem for your beneficiaries, but you're t creating a problem for yourself in terms of Social Security taxation. Interest from, mutual, from because of rental income. 
interest from municipal bonds is countable as provisional income. You may not pay tax on them at the federal level, but you will count them in your provisional income calculation. You take all of those amounts, you add them up, and then you add to that one half of your Social Security benefit to determine uh, what your provisional income is. And if your provisional income is greater than $32,000 as a married couple or $25,000 as a single individual, you're going to pay tax on 50% of your Social Security and benefits at your highest marginal tax rate that year. If those thresholds exceed $44,000 for a married couple, $34,000 for an individual, you're going to pay taxes on 85% of your Social Security benefits. Our studies show that why this is unacceptable is that because people who pay taxes on their Social Security create a hole in their Social Security that has to be, because of their lifestyle, right? That has to be filled by them removing assets from all their other uh, buckets and that makes them deplete their overall portfolio five to seven times faster than uh, it, it, it would if their Social Security was not taxed. All right, we'll really get in the weeds and all this and a lot of other topics at our class. If you haven't ever gone through this, you really enjoy this. Uh, September the 26th and 28th are, are, are night one. It's a two-night class. Part one is September the 26th, a so Tuesday. Can't make that. Maybe Thursday's better for you. Go to go to night one on, on, on Thursday the, the 28th, and then we'll do night two the next week. Tuesday and Thursday, October 5 and 7. We're going to have workbooks for you for this class. You'll be able to work through that. We're also going to be handing out other books that uh, will be greatly beneficial to you. So much value-packed information in this course that you're, you're no way that you can attend and not come out with things that you didn't know, didn't understand, and that you'll want to do. And for the solutions that I offer, you may not like them all, but you're, all you need to do is like them just a hair more and then you enjoy paying taxes to the IRS, okay? And we know, we know that tax rates are in are likely to rise dramatically higher because of everything that we're looking at, all the stimulus packages, the national debt, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. All right, check us out, assetguidancegroup.com. Educational events, is, the link is in the footer. I'll see you next time.